We are without a leader. The dead King of Scotland has no heir. War creeps in from the south, where Edward Longshanks, the avaricious King of England, has returned from successful campaigns in Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the Highlands. The English have thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens of siege weapons. We Scottish have a rabble of untrained soldiers who do not even know how to march in a straight line. We must act soon. If we are to have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we are to defeat them, every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now right-click near the blue flag. Good. Now move to the next flag. Click the soldier, then right-click near the flag. Excellent. Now to move to the next flag, you must Get walk through here. the black area. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go to the next flag, where you will meet some allied oh. soldiers. <laughs> to move all your soldiers at once, click near the units and drag around them. Then right-click to move them. Love. Try moving your soldiers to the next flag. Bid fear. Did all your units make it to the flag? The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen. Then click the red outpost. Good. Now scroll back down until you can see your soldiers again by moving your mouse to the very bottom of the screen. Select your soldiers by clicking near them and dragging a box around them. Keep following the road to the outpost. It's time to knock it down. Right-click the outpost to attack it. The outpost is destroyed. That should slow the English raids. Keep following the path to the village. Home sweet home. But wait, the English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack the village. Bid fear, fall bed. Don't panic. Just click your soldiers and right click the red English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you'll have won your first battle. Good job. Now you know how to fight back against the English army. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we'll need many more recruits and much more gold in our coffers. These ancient stones and oaks around us will soon be drenched with the blood of clansmen. An army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years. But gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meagre forces that we have cobbled together will collapse again. 
To support the Scottish army, you will need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood and 50 gold. Kia. To gather food from the forage bush, click a villager, then right-click a forage bush near the blue flag. Kia. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he is carrying 10 food. The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town centre. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Great. You now have 50 food. To win, also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. To gather wood, click a villager, then right click a tree. Kia. Bonit. If you haven't found any gold yet, search in the unexplored territory. Good, you found some gold. Good job, you now have enough wood. Excellent. You now have enough gold. You're well on your way to making a city. Edward Longshanks, for all its disrepute, has shown his military tactics in Wales, England and France to be very effective, if not cruel and ruthless. He is indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. With that, I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray that we can be ready when Longshanks comes. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the town of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up spear, sword and bow. We must transform these shepherds into soldiers. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. To win, you will need to create four militia. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town centre. Then click the Create Villager button in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for the villager to appear. If your town centre is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Forgera. Boonage. Kid. Boonage. Good job. The villager has appeared next to your town centre. Now, create another villager. You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click a villager. Kid. Kia. Click the buildings button. Click the build house button. Then click where you want to build the house. Rob, would you? If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. Kia, Rob Wigger.
good job. Try building another house. Erlov. Rob Wigge. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current and supportable population. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military building. Kia. Barracks complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the Create Militia button. Selecting different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen. That's one militia unit. Create three more and you will have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Click the barracks and quickly click the Create Militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Now that you have a few soldiers, you will be able to defend this area against English attacks. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But facing Longshank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king is yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias can only get us so far. We're going to need more advanced weapons. Rumours creep in from the south of a giant who leads the forces of Scotland. His great sword driving through earth, man and horse alike. If this mythical knight can stall the English advance, it will give us time to develop the arms we need. Even now our smiths are forging swords and fletchers are crafting arrows and crossbow bolts. The English use very advanced weapons and armor. To win, you will need to advance to the feudal age and repel the English raids. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villagers harder to kill. To research loom, click the town centre, then click the research loom button. Good. Researching technology costs you resources, but improves your civilization. While researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. Kid, Fiedige. Kid, Fiedige. Erlov, Fiedige. Kia, Fiedige. Bargara. New technologies and buildings become available when you advance to a new age. To advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age, you need 500 food. In addition to gathering food at forage bushes, villagers can herd sheep or hunt deer for food. Now you have enough food to advance to the Feudal Age. However, you also need two buildings from your current age. Now you can advance from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age. Click your town center, then click the Advance to Feudal Age button. Good. You're on your way to the Feudal Age. Two arms. The English are making a sneak attack. Now that the battle is over, create some extra militia units at the barracks to replenish your forces. Congratulations! Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. The idle villager button. Click it and locate villagers who are not currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click the barracks, then click upgrade to men at arms. Upgrading to man-at-arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men-at-arms. The English are attacking again. Teach them a lesson with your new men-at-arms. The English are no match for your warriors. Target
Longshanks has invaded, stormed and sacked the city of Perth. Worse, he has captured the fabled Stone of Scone and declared himself King of Scotland. If we cannot bring about a victory in battle soon, the Scottish armies will be too demoralised to put up any fight at all. If this mythical Scottish giant does exist, I wish that he would bring his forces up to Stirling, where we shall next do battle. The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longshanks is poised to cross the River Forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry and a multitude of archers. Our newly forged army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. The time has come to take the offensive. The English have a fort near the town of Stirling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. Before we attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villagers start gathering food and wood. Kia, field again. Keep making villagers Kia at your town centre until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. Field again. Scout cavalry are poor fighters, but they can see a great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the English. You can specify a location for new units to gather by setting a gather point. For villagers, click the town centre and click the set gather point button. The hill with the dead tree protects the only access to your town. It would be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. You have found some sheep. Sheep are a good source of food, so send them back to your town centre and assign a villager to gather food from them. Use your villagers to build a mill near your forage bushes. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south. Now click the dock and build a fishing ship. Here. To fish, click a fishing ship and right click on a leaping fish. The fishing ship will collect fish and automatically return them to the dock. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. Build a barracks and five militia to defend your villagers and explore the map. Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are depleted. Each farm needs only one villager working on it. You are close to the English base. Better not knock down this wall until you have an army of about 12 soldiers. Once you have gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal age at your town centre. If you are low on food, build some additional farms. Don't forget, keep exploring the map. The English are coming to attack. To protect your villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town centre. Click your town centre, then click town bell. Once you have gathered 500 food, advance to the feudal age at your town centre. If you are low on food, build some additional farms. Good. You defeated the English assault. If you have villagers in your town centre, ring the town bell again to send them back to work. Now that you have reached the feudal age, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least 12. Remember, you can upgrade your militia to men-at-arms at the barracks. You should always upgrade soldiers when you can afford it. Remember to upgrade weapons and armour at the blacksmith. You do have a blacksmith, don't you? Now you have a large enough force to attack the English base. 
charge. Keep your villagers working just in case you suffer okay. casualties and need to make more troops. Good. Your watchtower will fire on enemy units and help protect your town. Job. You have eliminated the English soldiers. Now, destroy that tower and our victory will be complete. Great job. You have destroyed the English camp. The Battle of Stirling is sure to end in victory for the Scots. Now that you know how to build them, advance through the ages and find and fight your enemies. You have all the basic skills you need to play a random map game. The most common type of game in the Age of Empires 2. Stirling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word arrived that Stirling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the bane of the English. Edward Longshanks names Wallace a traitor and a criminal. Sir William replies he cannot be a traitor for he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. Our coffers were depleted at the Battle of Stirling. So we need to strengthen our economy once again before pushing south into lands held by the English. We need to construct a market and establish trade routes to the villages of friendly clans. Local legends speak of three sacred relics hidden south of Stirling. Acquiring these artefacts for Wallace's army will be a great boost to Scottish morale. The Scottish army has been rallied by recent victories against the English. The situation is starting to look up. It will help the morale of our army to collect holy relics and place them in our monastery. One of the relics is close to your town. An ally has another relic, and the English have captured a third. You can retrieve a relic by clicking a monk and right-clicking the relic. Monks have other abilities as well. They can heal your injured soldiers or those of your allies. They can also attempt to convert enemy soldiers to join your army. Kia. Good. You have a relic. Protect the relic in the monastery by right-clicking the monastery. Perfect. You now have one relic garrisoned. Relics garrisoned in your monastery will slowly add gold to your stockpile. Farms are a good source of food once you have exhausted forage bushes and animals. Farms are built like buildings and must be periodically rebuilt. To gather food from a farm, click a villager, then right-click a farm. It's nice to have allies on the map. Your ally, the yellow player, can help you fight the enemy. You can also trade with your allies. To trade, 
We will need to build a mark. Rob Wigger. Rob Wigger. Rob Wigger. Rob Wigger. You have reached your ally's town. Go inside to see how his city is doing. Your ally's gate will open automatically for you. Did you know that there are three different modes for the mini-map in the lower right corner of the screen? You can show only military units, or only resources, and trade units by clicking the buttons just below and to the right of the mini-map. Welcome! If you've come for the relic, you can find it on the hill to the northeast of our town. Forget it. Oh. Villagers and soldiers normally appear outside of the building that created them. You can have your units move to a spot once they are created by using gather points. To set a gather point for infantry, click your barracks, click set gather point, then click where on the map you want your infantry to gather. You can use the technology tree to see what technologies and upgrades you can research. Click the technology tree button in the upper right corner of the screen to see the tree for your civilization. You now have two relics garrisoned. Bring back one more and you will be victorious. You have a market. The market can create trade carts to generate extra gold. You can also exchange one resource for another at the market for a small fee. Click the market, then click sell food for gold. The English are attacking our town. Can you tribute any spare food or gold to us? To tribute your ally, click the Diplomacy button in the upper right corner of the screen. Give your ally food and gold, but don't give him everything you own. Thanks for the resources. If you have any spare soldiers, come to our town and let's drive the English out. You made a trade cart. If you click the trade cart on your allies' market, you can make extra gold. Your trade cart will automatically make trips between your and your allies' markets. You have enough soldiers now to think about attacking the English and recovering their relic. If you're getting ready to attack the English, I can help you out. Here, take this food and wood. Four. Four pairs. Done cut. Four pairs.
Congratulations. You have captured all three relics. With the three relics locked away safely in Scottish churches, men murmur that we are blessed by the heavens. Our army now stands a chance as we prepare for the final clash with the English. Scotland now has archers and knights of her own with which to move our ships. We march south to Falkirk, where we will join with the army of William Wallace and plan our combined attack upon the English castle. The only way that we can hold the boggy lowlands around Falkirk is to build a castle and as many walls as we can construct in a short time. These fortifications will serve to protect our camp as we construct siege weapons with which to assault the English castle. Once the castle is constructed, Wallace himself is sworn to join our forces. Together, we will attack Longshanks and his English troops. The English could attack at any time. You have some walls already, but you should complete them as soon as you have enough stone. You can also build towers to defend your city. Units can garrison within a tower for defense and protection, and archers can even fire out of a tower. If you have surplus resources of one type, you can sell them for gold at your market. You can then use the gold to buy what you need. To build a castle, you must first advance to the next age, the Castle Age. The advanced buttons let you set combat states for your soldiers. A defensive soldier will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, then note the combat stance buttons in the lower left corner of the screen. Using the advanced buttons, you can also command a soldier to patrol an area between two points and guard or follow another unit. The advanced buttons allow access to a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect a weak unit, such as a monk. You have enough resources to go to the castle age. You should do that soon. Congratulations! You're going to find lots of things to do in the Castle Age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. Good job! With your new siege workshop, you can make battering rams. Rams are slow, but they are resistant to arrow fire and excellent at knocking down walls. You may need some rams to attack the English castle. You may need to assign extra villagers to gather stone, so you'll have enough to build the castle and all the fortifications you need. Great, you have completed the castle. So William should be here soon, and then it will be time to attack the English. Wallace has come. Kid, bit fear. One of your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create ten more wood raiders. With William Wallace and his ward raiders on your side, the English may be in trouble.
Once you have a large army with plenty of siege weapons, go destroy the English castle. The English castle at Falkirk is no more. The English pretensions in Scotland are surely at an end. The forces of Wallace are triumphant. Bid fear. It looks certain that we would be defeated at Falkirk. Yet somehow, though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious. The English castle was torn down. And a Scottish one should be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he is but one man, he inspires great deeds in others. Many of the Scottish knights and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five and a half foot beast, forced of course in Scotland. He has swore not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. The struggle will continue, for we have learned the ways of war. Now, it is the English who fear.